right, hey everybody, welcome back to the part-time homestead. So my garden, as usual, I'm always late with everything. So once again, I am late with dealing with some pest problems that I've had and actually late by several years. So I finally had enough and I finally gotten around to actually making an organic pesticide that I want to show you today. So even though I'm late, it's going to be a good test to see how well it works and if it works and I'll be prepared and ready for next year even though there's been some damage to my crops this year. So what we're gonna, the basic organic pesticide, the main thing is 100% neem oil. Um, you don't have to use neem oil, you can use vegetable oil, sunflower oil or other oils but this by far is gonna make it work the best. So I'm gonna use this, uh, we need baking soda all right and not your arm and hammer stuff that you put in the fridge but 100 percent sodium bicarbonate make sure that it's sodium bicarbonate 100 percent and then uh, organic or eco-friendly soap and the soap primarily is to keep you know oil and water don't mix so the soap makes it stay uh stay mixed up it doesn't let it separate that's what this basic soap is for. And we're going to do it in a one gallon milk jug for one gallon of water. All right. So what you need in one gallon. So I stole this recipe from a liter recipe. 3.75 liters is one gallon. So we're going to round that up to four. We're going to use it as a four liter recipe in a one gallon container. So you're going to need eight teaspoons of baking soda. There we go. Eight teaspoons of baking soda. Four teaspoons of neem oil. Four in a big waste. This stuff's pretty expensive, so you don't want to do what I did make a big mess like that all right and then we got to add the soap now it should be about 40 drops by no means am I going to count 40 drops this is going to be a guesstimate so basically I'm going to go with that if it doesn't keep it mixed up then we'll we'll add some more soap so first thing I'm going to do is take this around back and rinse this oil off the outside before I start handling this container. Okay, it's only been a few minutes and you can clearly see that the neem is still separating the oil is coming to the top. It's clearer on the bottom and the neem oil is up there. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more soap. See what that does. Okay, well you can see that it didn't really stop it from separating. So I'm thinking that the soap is kind of one of those shake well and use right away. So, all right, people. So there you can see it. I got it poured off into a little spray bottle and it's labeled. Um, yeah, I'm thinking the soap doesn't keep it uh, diluted at all times. It's gonna be kind of one of those uh, shake well before use type of situations. But we're headed out here to a citrus tree that I've had mealybug problems on forever and a day. And uh, we're going to try some of this. So here's my citrus tree. And look at all the mealybugs in here. And then pluck that off so you can see. Look at that. So I'm going to spray just this one vine or one branch right here with my freshly made neem oil stuff kind of spray it all around there oops and look at them all look how thick they are right there kind of spraying all around in here. Oh, 
kind of want to get a feel of what this is going to do to my tree. Yeah, maybe I'm getting a little bit crazy with this, but man, this tree is just in bad shape. All right. All right, so we will come back and check on this outside branch that I sprayed today with my neem oil mixture. So if it does well, We'll continue spraying the rest of the tree. Okay, here's my super damaged, pitiful broccoli. And you can see it's got harlequin bugs all over it. And the leaves are just eating up. There goes one right there. There you going? And these leaves are just eating up. So we're going to go ahead and spray. Um, we're going to spray a select few. I'll probably just spray this first row right here to see. Spray them on top and on bottom and kind of just see how it goes. Kind of give them a dusting. Fresh. They want all that fresh leaves in the center. Hmm. All right, hold on. Let me, let me switch hands here real quick. All right, so I sprayed those first three plants and we'll see how they look tomorrow. Okay, so here we are 24 hours later at my not so great looking broccoli. Now, if you remember, I sprayed broccoli, the cauliflower, or no, I'm sorry, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, and broccoli, this row right here, and I did not spray those. So they're still alive. They didn't die. Um, maybe there was a little bit of slight browning, but what you're going to notice here is that there's no harlequin bugs anywhere. So I think that these, remember there was harlequin bugs all over in here? There's nothing on these right here. Oh, there's one, but see there's some there. I probably did not get sprayed on. But what I want to show you is over here on the ones that I didn't spray. Look. Harlequin bugs, harlequin bugs, harlequin bugs. Look at here. Look at all those harlequin bugs. This is the one that I see I didn't spray over here. Harlequin bugs are everywhere. Some more right there, look at that. On everything that I didn't spray. So. 
Yeah, so definitely a big reduction in the harlequin bugs. Okay, so we're out here at the citrus tree that I sprayed. So this is the branch that I sprayed and you can see it looks the same. So I'm wondering this stuff is just dead. Is it different? It looks dead. I don't know, but if I sprayed that off maybe. These things are weird. This stuff is most certainly weird. Hmm. All right, so that was the one that I sprayed compared to Let's say this one that I didn't spray. Hmm, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Very hard to tell. It's very hard to tell. Uh, the jury's out on these. Okay, so this has been maybe about a week since the first application of the spray on the citrus tree, and I've done two applications. So, you can see all the white stuff is still on the tree, but there's no ants out here farming this. Oh, there's one. One little ant. But there's no trail of ants, and this stuff is just crumbling off. I think if I was to brush all this off, or get a water hose out here and spray it off, that it, the problem would be gone. See, oh, there's some ants. I guess there's still ants in here. Hmm. But I don't think it's nearly as bad as it was. I guess the jury's still out on the citrus. Maybe it's gonna take a little bit longer. Um, I think it's an improvement. So let's go check the other garden right now. Okay, here we are at the greens. You can see there's still bugs, but I would say there is a great reduction in the number of bugs. But there's also a ton of babies, which is those guys right there. Baby harlequin bugs. So, the greens, you can see they're not being disturbed or bothered as much. They're, you know, we got fresh growth in the middle and it's coming up fairly nicely. It looks a lot better than it did. See that? Nice fresh growth in there. And there's still a couple of harlequin bugs in there. Quite a few, some eggs. So, again, I believe with all organic stuff, or most organic stuff, it's just not as potent as a chemical pesticide, but it's safer and it does work. You just have to be on top of your garden and you have to be persistent with it. So I'm probably going to, you know, do more applications, but um, yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, I guess you guys got to be the judge on how well you think it works or doesn't work. But as for me, I'm going to continue to use it and uh, hopefully I'll get a jump start on the bugs next year and the garden will be a lot better. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something. Thumbs up, like, comment, and subscribe, please.